Hey there. In this video, I'm going to go over how you can use Vue AI to generate content at the speed of thought. This will act as the first getting started guide showing the basics of the software and how you can begin using it immediately. Now, the first thing you want to do is simply go to Vue.ai. This will take you to our web-based editor that can be accessed on any platform. It looks something like this. And all you have to do is click Get Started and log in or sign up to your Vue Studio account. Now the application is broken up into a couple main panels. On the left hand side, you have your main toolbar. This is where you can create a new sequence, open an existing sequence from your computer, or load in any of the sequence presets that we include with the software. Now this will constantly expand with more sequences available as time goes on. Over here in the center, you have your main editor. Now this is where you actually interact with your sequences that allow you to run various generative AI algorithms one after the other in, well, sequence. In this example, we have Stable Diffusion XL. And if I click Edit Sequence, we can actually see inside it's not just using Stable Diffusion, but actually upscaling the image afterward for further higher resolution. That is just a simple example of how you can use multiple steps to create better content than just a single one. But if I switch to a more advanced sequence, such as landscape environment, you can see I can simply interact with it by just entering a prompt, a snowy log cabin in the woods, and click generate. But before I do, you can see the way it actually works inside. Over here, we use a landscape prompt step to use GPT to further optimize our input prompt in a way that results in more photorealism and more landscape backdrop optimized images. Then it goes to Stable Diffusion with options and settings that are predetermined for this use case. And then finally, it upscales it to a high resolution for us. So with a single button press, we can generate an image that does all that automatically. And you can see that after a couple seconds, we have an image that came up. Now this one's a little blurry, but it is trying to mimic the photorealistic style. In future videos, I'm going to show you how you can further refine your prompt to get images that are more desirable. But for now, we're going to keep moving on. This is your sequence output window, your generation gallery. It shows you all of your images that you previously generated, and you can click download to download them to your computer. I'm going to go ahead and close this, but you can always reaccess it by clicking the generation gallery button over here. Now, for another example, we're going to start completely from scratch. Again, you can use your sequence presets to quickly generate images from a prompt or using voice to talk directly to it. But I'm going to click New Sequence. This gives us an empty sequence that we have to add steps to manually. You can see our prompt carries over for convenience. I'm going to go ahead and start with an append text step. Now, this is one of the more basic steps you can do. It simply tells it to, well, add extra text to this prompt. So once I have a step, I can delete it or double click or click the configuration icon to open the settings menu for that step. You can see we have a description as well as any controls available. I can simply add photorealistic, nighttime, and you can see if I click generate, my output will have my original prompt plus photorealistic nighttime. Now that's not very interesting, but what we can do here is then take the output of that and pass it along to, let's find stable diffusion. We can double click this to set various properties, including the aspect ratio, a negative prompt, a guidance scale, and so on. And finally, if we like, we can upscale it or use image to image or many other options like so. Now you can see that this list will actually change depending on what steps you have available. For example, with Stable Diffusion, it outputs an image, so it'll only show me steps now that take an image as input. If I deleted this step, you can see because this outputs text, now this will show me a wide range of steps that take text as input. I'm going to go ahead and add back my Stable Diffusion with 16 by 9. And for this example, I'm not going to upscale it. And you can see I can click Generate, and it'll give me my image. And just like that, wow, we have a really nice 
snowy log cabin in the woods at nighttime, and it's photorealistic. You can see I can switch between my original text and my new image, and this list will expand to populate with more images that you generate, and this download button will download whatever file is currently active in the big window over here. Now before I go, I'm going to talk about saving your files, because of course, the last thing you want is to lose any work on your sequence or images you generated. Of course, you can simply download each individual image, but even better, you can click this button to actually save your entire sequence plus all images to your computer as a view AI file. Now again, this file includes your sequence, your individual steps, all their settings, as well as each image or a bit of text you generated from that sequence. So these files can get up to 10 megabytes in size if you have many images, for example. So keep that in mind when sharing them around, but they will work on any View AI account, allowing you to pick up where you left off at any time. And that is an overview of the basics of View AI. In the next video, I'm going to go over some more advanced features, such as using API output and further refining your images and some basics of prompt engineering with View AI. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.